Hey guys, my name is Rob Robillard and I'm a carpenter in Concord, Massachusetts and along with Phil Benavides, a Pi Kappa Phi alum, uh, we put together the Build America Tool Safety and Building uh, Methods Training. Because like, if you get complacent, like Rob was doing with one hand, which this is a two-hand tool. You know, like the circular saw, the safety sometimes you have to stretch and you can control that tool. But this tool reciprocates and oscillates. So you saw when it pinched up on you, it like, it's got a lot of power. So you need to be prepared to handle it. You don't think it's the brain. Yeah, um, got them also as they're facing the direction. I want them to be oriented to how we're drilling them, so that I'm just holding them in my hand. You got a lot of screws to send by. That's a good thing to do because it just makes it a lot faster to do the job. Not my fault. I have some time I got to make up for lost time this season. <laughs> but um, uh, whenever you do the. Uh, Post mount connector. You want to make sure you have three holes there. You want to fill the holes with either the correct uh, screws or nails. So, um, and show me with your pencil. Yep, so then that becomes 22.5 because this is 20. One, two, 22.5. Okay, pivot point, 20, one, two, just a little bit. I don't know this is strap. You guys stopped right when I turned the camera on, really? While that tool training. The technical skills that the team is learning during this tool training um, is varied. So we have uh, crew members who come to us who've never used tools before. So we start on a crawl, walk, run basis. So we teach them basics. We start with hammer and nails and we work our way up to table saws and um, uh, miter saws and drills and circular saws. The, the, as far as technical goes, they're, they're learning the tools first, safety on the tools, and then we graduate slowly into building methods and building techniques. And a lot of the stuff that they're uh, working on are things that they'll see at camp because we've reached out to the camps and we've asked them what kind of projects they'll be working on so that we've been able to make our lesson plan geared, to the, geared towards those projects. Finger off the trigger, right? Yep, that's good. Run the drill back to yeah. There you go. All right, back. Go at least a half inch past your fastener. So that way there, when this is going and you're uh, banging this in or wrenching it down, the dust that's great is the hole in the bottom. So making sure your drill bit is the appropriate length for the fastener. And if you want to have the drill bit, usually a little longer. So on average, six to nine inches to drill an average fastener. Um, after you drill your hole, we're gonna get a post mount connector, line it right up. We'll grab our anchor, put it in there, bring the nut up, because you don't want to beat and gnaw this over in case you had to remove it. Beat up your threads, yeah. And then you're just gonna whack it right down. You whack it right down so it's... There's a carpenter. 
So the work that we do here in training and how it translates to say what I might do as carpentry, a lot of the stuff is basic building methods and practices. Everything is based on foundation, right? Where we, we work on the basics, basic foundation of carpentry. We're teaching them about footings and framing and structure as well as fastening and, and strength and, and things like that. So a lot of the lessons that we're teaching today are basic carpentry lessons for carpenters out in the field. Now, let's talk about using the saw. This morning I talked to you guys about stance and balance. I'm going to line up on my zero, if you guys can come around me so you can see, everybody can see. Where's my finger right now? Off the, Off the trigger, right? So I'm lining up on that zero. I'm also looking at this, right? All right. When I'm ready, I'm gonna hold the saw with two hands. I'm gonna push the safety down and turn it on, right? So where are my legs doing? Same thing as that wrestling stance. I'm in that, I'm in that stance. I'm in my balanced, strong stance. Look at my blade, I look pretty straight. And I can make adjustments as I go. Come up to speed. And slide in. What was I doing with my feet? Move your back one first. Yeah, but but well, I was shuffle stepping. So shuffle stepping, right? I did move my back feet. You can move your front first too if you want. Nice and flat. Sneak it over just a little bit this way. Okay, now you gotta come back. One more. You want that line to be just outside of that tube. Touch it over just a little bit. Perfect. Now it's too far. Now sneak it back. One more. Right there. Okay, and then once you're happy with the lock in place right away, you get the bump. You're measuring like this, you want to pull it so it's taut, that'll pull actually it. pop out. Okay. As far as this type of work and, and how does it relate or translate to folks with disabilities, these, these guys are learning skills and that we're teaching them safe skills so that they can go and they can build, fix, and repair projects at these camps for, for people with disabilities. One thing that I try to stress to these guys is that the things that they built today are gonna last 10, 20, 30 years if they do it right. And people, thousands, thousands of people will enjoy their projects every year over the years. We have to cut the same plank the size of that. So let's get you the well, we the square. Might as well just cut some more decking, Mike, while they get off. That'll go fast. What? That'll go fast. How many? How many? And then two on this? Yeah.
I've been working with the Build America team for five years. We've actually done four years of training. We took a year off. They actually took a different route. Um, but I've been together with them for five years, consulting, um, advising, as well as instructing. Now I can swing this saw wherever I want it to go. So, 45 degree angle, the 45's here. I let go of this just before I get to 45. All 90% to 100% of my saws will have these deep tents. That bit might be chattered. Yeah, and the longer the bar you have, mm -hmm. the easier it is, the more that comes, the more leverage. So over the two days of tool training, it's amazing and incredible to see the kind of growth that, that comes out of the team. Um, I see timid guys that have never used tools, comfortable using tools. I see guys that come to us that have had some background in tools. Maybe they come with bad habits, they leave with better skills, uh, another level up as far as their ability to do things. And I also see some of these things that we're teaching, they're lifelong lessons. Many, many of these guys are going to own their own property, own their own homes, work on projects as they get older and move on in life. And these are great foundational basic skills to, to build upon as life goes on. figure out your spacing on that. I mean, you're doing a boardwalk, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't okay, but I'm going around. Yo! You can just eyeball it. Four feet, two inches. How many, how many, uh, really supports? Two, so four. Four. Okay. Uh, my guess to so those, uh, we will also need to add on, uh, no, the four by fours will need to be more than four feet, two. Here. Hold this like this. Get secure. Okay. Billy, let him do it. We're not giving them any guidance. We're all guilty, dude. Again. Over the next two days, the different areas that the guys will be trained on is day one will focus heavy on tool and tool safety, tool use, nomenclature, proper stance, balance, using the core. Then we're gonna work on day two. Well, well, day one will start in the end of the day and day two will be about building methods and construction methods, using the tools that they learned on day one to then start to build projects and processes, whether it's repetitive cutting, cutting patterns, measuring in layout, um, uh, 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 cutting uh, materials uh, off, a, off the stack with a circular saw or um, fastening and drilling. They'll be then applying those methods and techniques to projects. And at the end of the second day, they'll actually build a small version of one of the projects that they'll be at camp. It'll be the boardwalk project.
that's oscillating tool as well. If you're a mechanical engineer or a construction supervisor type major in college, this type of training I think is invaluable to you because you need to know how things go together, you need to know how things come apart as well, and how things are fastened and connected. And all of this stuff, all the things that you learn in school, they're applied here. This is how we apply them. This is the field. So all the theory and things that you learn, we're doing application. And I think it's great to kind of have that tie-in, you know, meshing of theory and textbook to real life application in the field. If you're even considering joining Build the Build America program this summer and you're like, well, you know, I don't, I don't know, it's not for me, I, I have no interest in construction, I don't want to go in the construction field, it's not my thing, it doesn't matter. These are skills that we're going to teach you and this six weeks is invaluable. You're going to learn, li learn lifelong lessons, things that you can use on your own house. You can repair your own deck. You can repair siding on your house. You're going to learn how to use tools that you can do some minor projects and repairs on your own property and like I said it's a lifelong lesson the six weeks is invaluable as far as the amount of skills you'll learn and the friendships you'll make along the way